Ah, good evening. My name is Victor Veilmunts, a vampire hunting vampire clan. It would seem Kurt wasn't able to make it tonight. But not to worry, you have me as your penis. And don't worry, the jokes are still free. That's right, the jokes are definitely free. On this fine October evening, I believe a Castlevania-inspired painting is in order, and what better chapter to start with than the very beginning? Symphony and I can wait, and if you're good, maybe we'll do it next year. But, without further ado, I invite you all to take up arms with me and prepare for this vampire paint battle. Oh crap, I forgot my sword. <laughs> Alright, now to begin this Castlevania inspired painting, we're gonna go portrait style instead of landscape style, which is be basically just take your canvas and turn it up long ways. And we'll also show you how to do a nice thin layer of the gel medium or liquid white. Apply it onto your two inch brush and begin to wisp across the sky like a shadow of the night. <laughs> just put it on the canvas. There we go, nice gentle application. Don't make it too heavy. It's a nice thin coat to make painting easier. Just like that. Now after you plague your sky with a nice thin layer of liquid white, go into your ultramarine blue, and begin applying it to the top of the sky. That liquid white really makes things easier. Just do some X strokes like Castlevania X. Alright, once you apply about half the canvas with the ultramarine blue, touch your brush into the beautiful alizarin crimson. Get a good amount of paint on there. And we'll go just below here. Nice red sky. Allow it to mix with the paint. Nice effects. Something like that, a nice eerie looking sky. Now to make this even more Castlevania inspired, let's go into a darker blue, take that same brush into your phthalo blue, and watch the magic happen. We're just gonna touch the top of the canvas because we don't wanna take away all this beautiful color in here. Take their brush, begin touching the top. Again, just use those X's. Okay, we'll mix for you. Something like that. Now, to make this even darker, take that phthalo blue, mix it with that alizarin crimson. Simple as that. You do get a very nice dark color here. And this again will be around the edges, top edges. Let's now add some dark clouds to enhance that Castlevania sky. Take your same brush, go into the black. And I would say mix this black with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Back and forth, back and forth. Once you have enough on your brush, you're just going to tap it in here. Looks like a nice October evening, doesn't it? 
Now after this beautiful display of clouds, let's add the moon. For the moon, let's get a smaller brush here. This one should do the job. Go right into your white. Pure white and come on, Castlevania, we're gonna need a crescent style moon. Pick it. This is all drawn at this point. The moon will pick up the color, so we'll go over it multiple times. And we'll say, I don't know, moon this way, moon that way, we'll say the moon's going this way. And I'll put it up in the sky here. Take it like that. And you might need to go over this multiple times, but that's fine. Something like that for now. We'll go back to that. It's a little too wet right now, but once it dries, we'll go right over top of it. Now, what would a Castlevania painting be without Dracula's Castle? Boring. So to make Dracula's Castle, we're going to take a smaller brush, go into that black, go into your white, go into your black, go into your white, make a nice little gray, and actually even go into some of that alizarin crimson. That might give us a good color. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the outline silhouette of the castle, and then we'll go ahead and add the lights and shadows to it. So where is it going to live? We'll say it's up high in the top here. It's up to you how you want to create it. There's many different versions of this castle, so I'm just simply going with my gut. Something like that, just for now, we'll go back to another detail. Let's go and do the overall painting first, and we'll go back and add the details to it. Now, the castle of Dracula always sits on the very top of a mountain or hill, so we can go ahead and represent that next. Go ahead and get that black color again. Mix it with brown. And we're going to sketch out what the mountain's going to look like. mountains over here in the distance. Make a kind of ledge here. And just fill it in. You can take your big brush and kind of smooth things out a bit. I would say bring it all the way down here. Ah, you are so skilled to paint at such a fast speed. But well, let's keep going. Let's paint mountains that are closer to us. To do so, get some of your lizard and crimson, get some of your brown, and some of that black. Really mix it on there. And we're going to again sketch out some of these mountains. The goal is to have them appear darker than these mountains. Go ahead and do so. We'll also paint some mountains over here. Now these are going to be further back compared to these mountains, so I would say a darker blue. Represent some peaks here and there really just filled in there. Why the painting is looking exquisite. Didn't know there was master artists in the crowd. Now to continue forward, let's have a little fun. I think it would be cool if Dracula's castle was overlooking a town below. So to do this, this all plays into one point perspective. Obviously, the castle is far away. The way we're gonna have the town come towards us is we're going to have it as angles. So structures always have to follow the rules of one point perspective, or depending on your angle, two point, three point. But in this case, we're going to do one point perspective. So mix the town color. Uh, we're going to use, you know, tops of buildings, lots of browns, whites, stuff like that. And we'll make it a very warm town before Dracula descends upon them. So with that being said, we're going to have some browns, some whites, kind of like Tudor homes and whatnot. So go over here. We're just gonna sketch some homes in here. 
Top of this home. Whoop, down. We're obviously going to go back into these. Some rooftops in there. There we go. As you can simply see, I'm just sketching in some building-like structures. Just apply a base color and go over it with a lighter color. So I just did the same mountain colors and just use white on the paintbrush. And then you can just kind of draw in your buildings. Now let's go ahead and just finish up here. Let's go ahead and add the road. So we'll just add a dark color, bring it all the way down. And just like that, the whole painting is covered with paint. And now comes the detail work. Let us go back up to Dracula's castle and give it a nice glowing vampire look. Grab a smaller brush and go right into your whites. And we'll add a little bit of yellow just to give a nice glowing look. Someone must be home in the castle. Go up here. Since it's far away, it doesn't have that much detail. So just here and there, touch it with some light. That actually might be good. We'll add a little bit of light and shadow, just give it a three-dimensional look. Since we still have that white on the brush, go into some white and a lizard and crimson. A little bit of black. Something like that color. And we're just going to pretend this, well, the moon's this way, so it has the light of the moon and just touch the side of the castle. the draw bridge. Looks pretty nice. Now get a pure dosage of black. Get a lizard and crimson and black. And we'll do the top roof area here. Just to kind of separate that from the gray stone work. It's growing, isn't it? And here and there. these top parts. Now just go into your black and we'll add a nice dark shadow to it. On the side. There you go. Looks pretty neat. Now we can do some detail work on some rock formations here. Same brush. Kind of have that glow from the castle white to it. Just here and there. Touch the rocks with some light. And we're just really just touching the mountain tops here. Over here too. Getting the light from the mountains. Getting the light from the moon. Now we can also add a shadow side to the mountain over here. Go into your black and blue. Kind of dab it along here. Some rock formations. Now let's go to the town. After you paint buildings for a while, it becomes second nature, so it might be hard at first, but don't give up, or Dracula will kill you. All right, so let's do one building at a time here. Let's add, to, uh, we'll make them dark roofs with white wooden sides, so. Let's say a mixture of black and brown on top of these roofs. Now after you sketch out your town area, go ahead and we'll mix some highlights and shadows for the buildings. So for these buildings here, I don't want like a Tudor style home, so get some white, 
some brown. Nice little tan color. Maybe some yellow. Alright, now with this mixture, go just on the face of the buildings. It's alright if the other colors mix into it. We'll go ahead and we'll go over top of this. So Tudor style homes have three elements. One, they have a tan overall appearance on the top. Two, they have wooden beams that kind of bring it all together here. So you can see a beam here, maybe a beam here, beam here. And then three, the bottom part's always stone. I guess it's what they did back in the day. You build your little stone box structure and then put some wood on top. House. So you can already see that I put the tan area and the wooden beams everywhere. Let's go ahead and focus on the stone bottom. So I'm gonna get some black, some ultramarine blue. And we're just gonna dab it here. Pop it on there, maybe some more black. Eventually we're going to put some light areas to this, so just the initial layer. Now after you add your first stone layer, go ahead and go back into the white, mix it up with that layer, and again you're just going to tap on the rocks here. So light's coming this way, be sure to follow the angles of the house you have done too. Alright, now after you're done adding the stones, you can go ahead and add a few lights to these windows. Take some of your yellow, take some of your white. And here and there, push this on the windows. Now we can't forget to give these houses doors. So they go into your brown and your black. Just go where the door would be, drag down. Easy enough. One more little detail for the town. Let's go ahead and just lighten up a little road here. I would just take some of that tan color and come down here. You just touch the road here and there to make it look like little cobblestones. Ah, uh, there's one more Castlevania element I want to add to this painting before we call it done. I think it'd be cool to add like a little gate here. If you've ever seen the Castlevania box art, it's always super epic, right? And the first game starts you off right in front of a gate before you enter Dracula's castle. So we can go ahead and add to the painting here. Grab your white, grab your brown. We'll just come over here. down a bit. Yeah, just a simple gate like that. Now we must take credit for the painting we have painted. Go into your deep cadmium red. And a touch of white. And we'll sign the bottom here. And with that said, we can call this Castlevania painting complete. It was a glorious night painting with you all. I do believe Kurt will be returning maybe next month. But one year from now, you'll see me again, and we'll do Symphony of the Night, one of my favorite games. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more video game paintings in the future. And until next time, stay inspired and keep painting. Cheers!